Hello guys, it is Lukash with part two of my Lucas matchup chart analysis. If I can get there. All right, so yesterday um, I analyzed, in part one of my video, I analyzed the negative three and the negative two matchups. Now I'm going to try to get through the negative one matchups and then all the way up to Jigglypuff on the even matchups. So for negative one matchups, um, I have Bowser Jr. Uh, this one is actually very close to being even because um, in the tiers they're not they're not ordered. Um, but Bowser Jr. is very close to being an even matchup. But the reason why he's in negative one is because his clown cart can sometimes power through your PK fire, which um, is really difficult to deal with. It's especially difficult to camp out someone who has a move like clown cart. That's just a really good movement option. He can combo off of that too, so if it catches you by surprise. Um, so it's hard to deal with that. Other than that, it is very easy to um, gimp his recovery. So that's Bowser Jr. for you, though. Uh, another ne negative one is uh, Dr. Mario. Now, Dr. Mario is very close to being negative two, but the reason why I keep him at negative one is because Dr. Mario has his pills. Um, Dr. Mario has a horrible recovery, is why he's negative one, not negative two. But the reason why he's even such a bad matchup is that he has his pills. He can camp you out with those things so hard. If he pretty much just pushes neutral with pills, it's very hard to do anything. Even if you reflect the pills, all that's going to do is sometimes get rid of one of his pills. It'll just like, you know, it'll trade off with one of the pills. So pretty much it's all just pills for Dr. Mario, but pills are very hard to deal with. Um, other than that, if you get him off stage, he's pretty much dead. So that's what keeps him at negative one. Um, negative one, we also have Fox. Uh, this is this is uh, This is obviously my opinion. A lot of people might be thinking Fox is negative two for Lucas, but I think Fox is easily a negative one for Lucas because although Fox has um, his reflector and he's super fast and can approach you with speed, which is usually what Lucas struggles with, it's not really that much of a struggle for Lucas um, because Fox, if you get him off stage, it's extremely easy, especially Fox fall. Um, at the rate of which he falls. Um, I've gotten gimps on Fox and Falco at 0%. Um, you just, just, if you just put out a downer there, it's um, hard for Fox to get past that. Usually he'll just die off the bottom. Um, and it's easy to uh, get the, it's easy to grab the, um, the side B recovery with your down smash. It's easy to two frame that. Um, other than that, though, if Fox gets in, it's very hard to deal with. Um, also negative one, I have Ice Climbers. So Ice Climbers are a little bit of a dilemma for me. Um, I don't really get that many Ice Climber players. I'm sure not very many of you guys get Ice Climber players as well. But Ice Climbers, I'm putting at negative one. Um, ice Climbers have a very... If, if they're really good at... Um, at their desync combos and just desyncing in general, it is extremely hard for Lucas to deal with that. Um, especially the Blizzard, um, their down B, that's hard to deal with. Um, of course, you can absorb it, but usually you're not going to be able to get an absorb on it. Um, uh, neutral is actually pretty nice for Lucas. It's just. Once they get you in disadvantage state, there's almost nothing you can do. Um, negative one, again, I also have Kirby. Um, now this one might, it's it's on the border between negative one and negative two. Um, Kirby has pretty much the same issues that Lucas has with Squirtle. Kirby's a difficult opponent to hit, which means sometimes you'll be using PK Fire in neutral, and it'll just completely glance over Kirby. Um, so it's hard to hit Kirby like that. Uh, also, Kirby can 
Inhale, um, Lucas's PK Fire, as well as PK Freeze. Um, those two aren't really big problems, though, because if if you can actually bait a Kirby, if you can bait the Kirby to suck in your PK Fire, you can run in and punish... Um, you can punish Kirby while Kirby's eating the PK Fire. So I like to do that a lot. A reason why I kept Kirby off of negative two, exploitable recovery, you can... If we're good enough and you aim it right, you can either for you can force a Kirby to either air dodge or up B prematurely with the PK freeze, as well as attempt to try to go off stage with and get some PK fire gimps. Um, also at negative one, we have Mewtwo. And the reason why Mewtwo is negative one, Mewtwo has the side B reflector. That's pretty difficult for Lucas to deal with. Um, I'm not entirely sure if the side B reflects PK Freeze, because I've seen Mewtwo players try to reflect the PK Freeze, and either the PK Freeze goes behind them, or it just goes through the side B, it just like hits them, usually. But um, the fact that Mewtwo can reflect PK Fire is, a, is an issue. However, Mewtwo does have a decently exploitable recovery, um, just like Pelotena's recovery, um, Mewtwo's recovery is a teleport, so it's a little bit easier to, um, to two-frame. So that's Mewtwo for you. Also, Mewtwo can really pressure Lucas offstage. Um, since Lucas has kind of like, a, you know, a fox sort of up -y, it has startup, it's hard to do, it's hard to get out of that situation if Mewtwo hits you off the stage far enough where you can't use your tether. Negative one, I also have Mr. Game & Watch. Now, a lot of people are thinking this matchup is negative two, um, maybe even negative three, but this, in my opinion, this is easily negative one. Um, Mr. Game & Watch can bucket your PK fire. That That is a, that's a problem. He can also bucket your PK freeze. If he buckets your PK freeze, by the way, that bucket the oil that's going to come out of that bucket is just going to be huge. That is a huge problem. But one thing I've found is usually you can still camp out Game & Watch. Um, if he tries getting something going with neutral air, like approaching with neutral air, you can, you can either, you can get it away with forward air and as well as his air, um, you know, the snake. Um, also, something I found that's very good against Game & Watch players, since they really like to bucket things, you can actually use PK Freeze on stage and detonate it as fast as possible, and the Game & Watch players will use bucket, and they get stuck in the end lag, so you can get free grabs by baiting and punishing them that way. Um, so that's them. Uh, that's, that's Mr. Game & Watch, of course. Next, we have Olimar. Olimar is just like the Ice Climbers. He might be negative two, but I don't see Olimar players like at all. I think I've only went against like six or seven Olimar players on online quick play. But just looking from like DeBuzz's game footage and things like that, it appears that Olimar um, deals pretty well with Lucas. Um, Lucas's PK Fire can keep out uh, the Pikmin for the most part, but usually the Pikmin will still find a way to get through and gnaw that 60% on you. Um, but I feel like Olimar, his recovery is already super exploitable, and especially Lucas being the character that he is, being one of the best exploiters of recoveries, um, he can really get Olimar out of his zone when he does that. Um, Olimar up smash is also really good at catching Lucas. Like if you try landing with a Lucas down air, which by the way, you should never do. That's a horrible way to land. If you try landing with the Lucas down air, he can catch you with an up smash. Um, or if you try landing with a fast fall in there, if he times it right, he can also catch you there. So that's Olimar. Pac-Man is um, a negative one. I A lot of people, a, a lot of people this time, they really do think Olimar, um, or they really think that Pac-Man is a counter to Lucas. I don't think so. I've done many, many online tournaments, and it has always shown that if you play it right, 
Pac-Man is only a negative one. It's usually like a 55-45 or a 60-40 um, in Pac-Man's favor still. But if you can keep him out and you can keep... Um, if you can keep using his fire hydrant against him, not I don't mean just reflecting it because that's a little bit risky if you miss. I mean just um, actually using his fire hydrant. Like if it's on the ground, you can do your own angles. You know, it's not just pa it's not just Pac Man that gets to play with the fire hydrant. You can do it too. Um, two PK fires, by the way, will move the hydrant, so that is pretty huge. As well as one PK freeze that can move the hydrant. So that's um, that's pretty huge for Pac-Man, or yeah, for Lucas against Pac-Man. Also, Pac-Man's recovery is decently exploitable. He cannot, um, for the most part, if your PK freeze isn't stale, he cannot super armor his side B recovery through your PK freeze. Your PK freeze will win, which is um, very, very good for Lucas. Then uh, we have, oh, also um, Pac-Man's Uppy is easily exploitable by Lucas. Um, next we have Pikachu. So the reason I, I'm not putting Pikachu at negative two is because, I don't know, for some reason Lucas just has enough range to keep Lucas, to keep Pikachu out. Even if Pikachu spams her neutral B, he can absorb those, which is actually, like, it's a game changer. Um, as well as reflect them, which works sometimes. But Pikachu doesn't really have any good um, disjoints on any of her aerials. So you can really just, you can really just capitalize on that. You can, you can uh, call out their jump out of shield with a Nair or Fair. Um, you can also get some nice Zara combos going in most of the time. You just you just gotta watch out. Um, you just gotta watch out for the Pikachu combos. So yeah, that's that. And then we have um, Rosalina and Luma. So Rosalina and Luma, they're pretty difficult for Lucas to deal with. But I found um, I actually faced against a Rosalina and Luma player in a tournament that I got second place at. The matchup is doable. It's probably a 60-40, but if you really push it, it can maybe be 55-45. Um, um, obviously, Rosalina has um, the neutral B, which if she spams it um, when you spam your PK fire, you can't really get that going in there. But... One thing, a reason why I think um, Lucas does so decently against Rosalina and Luma is because um, he can nair a lot of the time, and just that hitbox being active can just get rid of some of Rosalina's approach options. Um, Luma is, is a big issue, actually, but most of the time, you'll be okay. You can use your forward smash to get to um push luma back and you can do all sorts of stuff like that but uh, but the biggest reason why rosalina and luma is only negative one is that because of how good lucas is at exploiting recoveries it will force rosalina and luma to recover high most of the time and when they recover high um their up b has so much landing lag where you get a free smash attack or at the very least, a free grab. So that's why I think she's um, negative one. Uh, she doesn't have enough range neutral, pretty much is what I'm saying, um, in terms of why she's negative one. Next, for negative one, we have Ryu. So pretty much, Ryu's only negative one because he's like Ken, except worse. <laughs> uh, sorry, Ryu mains, but it's pretty true. Um, he, he has the invincible side B, so he can get some decent approaches going there. But the reason why that's not really an issue with Ken, with, with Ryu, and it is an issue with Ken, is that um, Ryu's side B only hits once. So if even if you know he's going to do that, um, and you miss a PK fire, usually you can shield, and you can still punish it. 
Um, but once again, uh, when Ryu gets into his advantage state, just like Ken, which is extremely difficult to deal with, he will turn up those 65% combos. Um, really, really bad for Lucas. Um, but then again, the, uh, the matchup, the, the recovery is still very exploitable with um, PK Freeze and PK Thunder. Um, next we have Sonic. Now, Sonic is very hard to deal with with Lucas, but um, I actually lost to a Sonic player in Grand Finals, um, the same tournament I got second place at, obviously, but I did force a bracket reset on the Sonic player, and what that really shows me is most of the time, Sonic is just going to go in with, you know, his random jank, you know, he's going to go in with one of his many specials, <laughs> many specials. Uh, he's going to just go in with those, and you can just shield and they're out of shield most of the time. If you play really campy, and um, if you play really campy and just wait for him to come to you, and wait for him to make mistakes and get those in air out of shields, um, his recovery eventually does him over. Um, but his recovery is also the thing that makes him so good against Lucas. He can go super deep. Um, th the same player I lost to at Grand Finals, he goes all the way deep for me. I, I go all the way to the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and he goes that deep and still makes it back. I feel like Sonic's recovery is grossly underestimated. Um, I also feel like Sonic forward air can really mess up Lucas's um, tether recovery because I'm the, the hitbox is so active where most of the time it'll snatch up Lucas um, through that tether. But even better, um, if he gets you off stage and he lands a forward air, you're done. Uh, so any, any sort of disadvantage versus Sonic is horrible. Lucas's disadvantage in Smash Ultimate is already pretty bad for the most part, but Sonic just really amplifies it up. Um, but like I said, you can camp him out for the most part with Zare, um, sometimes for PK Fire. That's a little bit risky though. So next we have Yoshi. I really don't like playing against Yoshi in Smash Ultimate, and that is because whenever I play against a Yoshi, I feel like I'm just going to get mashed the crap out of. Um, what Yoshi is really good against with Lucas is Yoshi can... I've seen a lot of Yoshi mains do this to me. Um, it's it's hard, but Yoshi can still do it. They can, uh, they can actually forward air your tether recovery. And if they get the spike part, you're done. Um, on top of that, playing neutral against Yoshi is pretty hard. Uh, usually you can keep out Yoshi in neutral, which is pretty good. But if you make a couple of mistakes here and there in neutral and you're thrown into disadvantage, that's pretty bad. Um, off stage is pretty bad. Uh, the eggs. Um, one thing I have found that's actually pretty good against Yoshi's is... Especially, particularly on Wi-Fi, whenever they hit you with an egg, which is the one thing that makes um, camping against Yoshi a little bit more difficult. Uh, when I hit Yoshi, or when Yoshi hits me with an egg, if I just mash forward air, um, the Yoshi will most likely try to do something to try to get a combo off of the egg toss. And obviously that's not true. So my forward air will usually went out against that. So I recommend fellow Lucas mains to just try doing that every once in a while. Um, now, uh, I'm going to ignore Hero for now. Um, I'm definitely going to put Hero at a plus one or maybe plus two later. Um, I think I meant to grab another character, but whatever. That's, yeah, Hero's a plus one or plus two. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll keep going, um, I'll keep going to Inkling for evens. So now we're here at evens, and here, first off, we have Bayonetta. Uh, Bayonetta, it's hard to 
gimp bayonetta. Um, you can you can gimp bayonetta if you land a down smash. That's that's fun and all that thing and all that stuff. But um, bayonetta, the way she plays neutral, ninety five percent of the time your PK fire is going to work. So that's really good. Um, but just the fact that her recovery has different angles and all sorts of different ways she can recover back to stage. For instance, she can recover high. That's um, that's just a little bit more difficult for Lucas to deal with. So yeah, that's that. And then next we have Bowser. So the reason why I'd say Bowser is even and not a plus one or plus two for Lucas is because Bowser just does so much damage where even if you're winning in neutral most of the time and you're getting him off stage, uh, that's, it's pretty, sometimes it's just hard to actually get the win uh, to actually get the stock. Um, I have found it's pretty easy to trap Bowser though. If you get Bowser off stage, you can jump off the stage, PK fire. If they jump over it, you can jump and forward air them. That's a kill. If they if they go under it, you can down air them. Um, but if you don't get that trap right, they can still find a way through it, of course. Um, and another reason why he's neutral is his up B is very hard to two-frame for some reason. Uh, he doesn't really have the horrible... Um, hitbox, hurtbox shifting that other players, uh, that other characters like Captain Falcon have, for instance. Um, in neutral, though, like I said, it's pretty easy to camp out Bowser. Um, you just you just can't get hit with his jank. Like you can't get you can't get grabbed, pretty much. Um, and you can't openly approach a shield. Uh, pretty much, Smash Ultimate forces you to camp the heck out of Bowser. Next we have um Dark Samus. So Dark Samus slash Samus. So I I told you it wasn't an order. That's why they're not next to each other. But yeah that's just Dark Samus slash Samus. Um the reason why I think they're even is um there's two things that turn the tide over in Lucas's favor. Other than that um they are really good against Lucas. Um, number one, Lucas is forward smash reflex, so Lucas can reflect their homing missiles and their power missiles and all of that stuff. And number two, Lucas can absorb their neutral B. Now that's really hard to do and really risky, um, particularly on Wi-Fi. Usually in um, normal, in uh, local, um, if you have good reactions, that's really good. You can absorb a good like 30% off of a fully charged ball. But other than that, playing neutral against Samus and Dark Samus is really hard because Samus and Dark Samus is, um, their Zare is extremely underestimated. It's underused um, in Smash Ultimate. They can uh, short hop or full hop uh, Zare you. And that will keep you away for the most part. Um, also, their grabs can be a little bit of a problem to deal with. Um, if they jump out of shield and immediately forward air, you cannot um, you cannot get a positive outcome by trying to uh, nair them. Um, so it's hard to push with nair. Um, if 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 they if they know you're trying there that you're trying to read their jumps. They, they will stop jumping and react to your nair with a fair um, or an up air. Also, a reason why they're even, Samus and Dark Samus, um, their up B is, uh, it's hard to gimp for some reason because it act, it's, it's really good. It's a good recovery in general. And on top of that, I believe it has a little bit of startup invincibility, which is... Um, decently hard to deal with. So that's why I think Samus and Dark Samus is even. All right, um, last but not least for this video, we have Inkling. So Inkling, you know, we all know Inkling. She's an S tier, she's really good. She has some pretty gifted jank. Um, 
Naron shield is safe. Uh, background shield is really safe. But in general, I feel like in the neutral game, Lucas Lucas outshines Inkling by far. Um, pretty much, if you camp him out with PK Fire and Zare and Fair, um, if you camp him out with that and keep them out there, um, it's really hard for an Inkling to come back from that. Um, if, so, and then if they get up close, um, you can get some down tilt combos. If you can get a good down tilt combo going, um, but pretty much what I do is I camp them out with those three moves that I just said, you know, PK fire, um, forward aerial and, um, Zare. but pretty much when they get in close, I spam neutral air out of shield or full hop neutral air. If, um, if I know they're going to jump because most inklings just jump. And then uh, I do a lot of spot dodges against Inkling. Inkling players love spamming grab, which um, is pretty easy to punish, especially Lucas has just a plain out better grab than Inkling. Um, also, Inkling's recovery, although it's really, really, really long, it's very easy to two frame and it's very easy to gimp um, with PK, PK Thunder. Um, and PK Fire, it's decently hard to get a PK Freeze going, but PK Fire and PK Thunder pretty much eliminates a lot of Inkling's recovery options. So, all right, guys, that's it for the video. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Remember to uh, join, disc join my Discord in the link in the description below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Thank you all.